Beniscari is all across uh, the form, primarily uh, around Victoria for Racing.com, and he joins us now. Good morning, Ben. Uh, firstly, before we talk about Mooney Valley, what did you make of Long Jack yesterday? Yeah, I thought it was a, a nice uh, performance. I was out there at Ballarat. Um, probably not the strongest maiden for this time of the year, so uh, obviously the horse is going to continue to improve with uh, natural maturity and as he progresses in distance, but um, a nice start to things yesterday at uh, Ballarat. Yeah, I suppose it's a situation where he, he did what the market expected and uh, his next start will certainly, and, and the campaign, uh, will reveal more. OK, it's Fee and Stakes Day at uh, Mooney Valley and uh, this is the market for uh, the Group 2 feature. How did you sort this one out, Ben? Because home, Homesman is $5 and uh, Best of Days there at $6.50 in NZ, Sikandra Bad at uh, $7 and uh, also a little bit of support for the chosen one for Murray Baker, Andrew Forsman and Damien Lane and Canenda right down the bottom is well in commission at 6. How did you sort this? Yeah, this is a race I was really keen to take on the market early. Find a couple at decent prices and uh, one of the horses I liked at, at decent prices, um, I selected for a segment I do for racing.com during the week called... Uh, an early look trying to find uh, early value was Kinedna and she was sort of 11 or $12 on Wednesday and Thursday. Now, that price is completely gone. Um, I still think she's probably worthy of, uh, rather than each way bet, when you've got the, uh, the, the double figure odds, she's probably more of a win bet proposition. Now she's that 6 or $7 mark, but I do think um, she represents a little bit of value in the race still. It's a, a, a mare that when the blinkers go on is the big key for her. You've just got to almost disregard her form first up uh, in the PB Lawrence space where she didn't have the blinkers on. You look at last preparation, she went around. When the blinkers went on second up at the Valley, she was terrific over 1,600 metres. Then won a couple of Group 1 races, including over a mile in the Queen of the Turf stakes. And the blinkers go on today, so I think she uh, is really well placed in this race. It's not an overly strong field. Homesman obviously was the key chance. But the other horse I think there's a little bit of value around outside of Canedna is Mr Marathon Man at $21. He comes through uh, that PB Lawrence Stakes and I thought he was really good measuring up at weight for age. He's got a bit of a fitness advantage over most of his rivals here. He's better suited up to a mile. The big keys though I think for him is that Barrier 2 should allow him to settle much closer in the run. So he could be one from the map that can run a bit of a race um, at big odds, but I like Kinedna with the blinkers on and Mr Marathon Man just to uh, run a cheeky race at big odds. Mr Marathon Man currently 20 to 1 here with uh, tab.co.nz, so uh, an excellent uh, price to spec uh, with uh, Ben Ascari giving us uh, that form lead. OK, uh, race number two on the program is uh, sees Juniper rather, $3.50 favourite. How did you see this? Yeah, this is a race where I think the market's identified the two standout chances. And I, I'm surprised they're both not a, a touch shorter in Junipel and Lure Me In. They went around uh, a couple of weeks ago in a similar benchmark, 78, same class, same distance. Junipel was dominant winning and Lure Me In uh, that day was probably unlucky not to test him. He sat three wide against the, uh, against the pattern on the day, had no cover was really brave, I thought, to finish close in. So, um, and Junipel won that race, swinging wide on the bend, and he was the only horse on the day to win with that sort of a run. So with that in mind, I think they'll fight out the finish again. It's not really flash odds to back both of them, given you're getting about 360 and 480. Um, but I think if you stake your bets accordingly, have, have a bit more on Junipel than you do a lure me in, I'd be pretty surprised if one of those two doesn't win the second race today at the Valley. Good stuff. Uh, appreciate uh, passing on your approach as well. Race number four, do we pile in on Aubrey? I'm actually pretty keen to take her on at the price. Um, she's she's pretty short given. I think there's been anything spectacular out of the figures that she's produced winning in Sydney. Clearly she's got some talent. Clearly she's progressive and she does map pretty well today to settle just in behind the speed, which looks as though it's going to be set by working from home and Victory Kingdom, but the horse I like is Victory Kingdom. I thought she was terrific first up at Caulfield and what was a high-pressure race. She was probably too close to that pressure uh, at Caulfield. It was a race that was dominated by a couple of horses from well off the speed in Grey Shadow uh, and also Miss Ayano. And um, given the fact she was first up and too close to a really fast speed, I thought the run was really good. I like that she had three weeks between runs. I think she... Uh, 
there's still probably a touch of value at about that four dollar sixty mark. So I think Victory Kingdom's the one to beat. The horse at a bigger price that I don't want to lose on if she wins the race is Tafani. There's about eight dollars around for Tafani. She disappointed market expectations first up at Sandown, but um, a saying that I, I go by is thousand metre horses to thousand metre races, and I think she just found a thousand far too sharp. And on her form last preparation, you'd think she'd be close to favourite in a race like this. So. Off one forgivable run, I don't think we need to be sacking Tafani. Uh, I want to uh, certainly be winning on the race if she gets home over the top of them. So, Victory Kingdom, uh, the horse, I think, is the one to beat. But I'm going to be um, having something on Tafani as well because I don't want to be losing if she wins.